Hi there, my name is Isaac Oster, and in this tutorial series, we're going to be talking about modeling a mech version of a cicada. This is uh, part two of a hard surface modeling tutorial series that I'm uh, putting together for ZBrush. So uh, this is the reference image that I've, or the, there's a, there are a couple of them here, the reference images that I'm going to be using for this project. I may throw some more in here, but I think this is probably going to be just fine. I found these on uh, ones from Wikipedia, the other one is whatever, at publicdomainpictures.net. I'm going to provide the links here. By the time you're looking at this, they may or may not be available. If they're not available, then you can just find some other images. There, There's a million of them on, on uh, Google, and uh, cicadas are not that different from one another. So you should be in good, uh, good shape regardless of uh, what's available to you. So I have already put those images onto one image. I'm going to go to import them. We'll go to texture and import. And then we'll go over to the reference here. And then once it's imported, you can just click on it and then click this button right here, which will add it to Spotlight. So, so the way Spotlight works is you can, if you're clicking inside, actually, I think it's if you click anywhere, you can move this image around. In this case, I'm going to want to kind of shrink it down so that it's not taking up too much space, but I can still see it clearly and I'm going to drop it to the canvas by hitting Z. So now it is no longer editable, but if I want to mess with it again, I can hit Shift-Z. Actually, Shift-Z makes it go away, Z makes it come back. So Z is how you uh, drop it to the canvas or make it editable again, and Shift-Z will get rid of it. So in this case, I want it there. I'm going to go ahead and grab a Z-sphere, and we'll turn on Symmetry here by hitting the X key. Oops, looks like I forgot to hit Edit here, so I'm just going to Control n We'll draw it again, tap the T key, you can see edit comes on to, to uh, enter edit mode, X to toggle on symmetry, and I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag from the center there, and we'll click and drag again. You need at least three Z-spheres if you only have two, and you try to make it uh, into geometry, you'll end up with something odd like this, but if you add the third, then a ZBrush has enough information to uh, go ahead and, and make that a, a full shape. But uh, this may look a little bit low poly. It is in fact not low poly. If I turn on my poly frame, you can see it's actually pretty dense mesh. And that's because of some of the settings here that I've pulled out. These things live inside here. Uh, and if there's any confusion about what, what's going on there, please refer back to the earlier tutorial series on, on the detailed version. The, the short version is you can just grab your Dynamesh resolution slider and take it to zero and your density slider and drop it to one and you will get something that looks like this, which is gonna be a little bit closer to what we're, we're going for try to just kind of very crudely recreate what's happening here. I'm going to be doing an awful lot of this just with regular old sculpting, so it doesn't matter too much what's going on, but just to kind of demonstrate. If I wanted to make this list a little bit smaller, I'm going to tap the E key uh, while in edit mode to go into scale, and then I can just kind of scale this one down, and maybe we'll scale this one down too. Tap the W key to go into move mode, and whatever, right? Like, it's, it's not really uh, super important, but you can do a little bit of dialing on the side if you'd like. So here we are, let's say that's my my uh, Z-Sphere configuration. I'm going to tap A, and then I'm going to come over to this button here called Make Ply Mesh 3D, and now we have a piece of geometry. So even though I just went to the trouble of turning off Dynamesh, I'm actually going to turn it back on because, uh, oh, we can subdivide it a few times first. So the, the, the beauty of subdividing it is, I'm just hitting Control D here, is it'll just round out kind of nicely, but I do want the mesh to be uh, more detailed so that I can come in and start adding some of these features. So we'll go to Subtool, I mean uh, Geometry, and Delete Lower. We don't need to hang on to those subdivisions. And then uh, we'll just go to Dynamesh. And the default resolution here is probably fine. We can go ahead and tap it and make sure. And yeah, that's, that's okay. So now I'm just going to use some very basic brushes to create a rough scaffolding that then I'm then going to use to to create uh, retopology. And if this process sounds totally alien to you, then please refer back to the uh, part one hard surface modeling tutorial where I go through all the stuff and uh, more granularity. So if I want to sculpt on this mesh, oh, that's interesting. Maybe they changed this feature. It used to be you had to turn off spotlight projection unless the geometry was underneath the spotlight. I just upgraded like right, right before this tutorial. So I don't know, maybe they've disabled that. Anyway, um, if you can sculpt uh, with, with your uh, spotlight image, then go ahead and do so. There's no reason to uh, go to the process of turning off spotlight projection. But if for some reason you can't sculpt, this is a good thing to disable, and it lives here in brush, and then uh, which one is it? Uh, samples. 
so not really an awesome place for it to live considering it's kind of a blocker if you don't have it disabled in older versions of zbrush at least that's where it lives you can just turn it off and you should be able to sculpt on your mesh so i have uh, symmetry on here it's it's been inherited because the z sphere that this thing came from had had symmetry so right now i'm just going to kind of like look at this overall shape i don't really need to go quite that crazy with the top and we'll just kind of pull it out a little bit and I think what I'll probably do here, for those of you that are really just interested in the in the uh, the hard surface component of this tutorial, is I'll try to distribute the the crude sculpt here that I generate, and just in case you know people just want to get to the the fun stuff. Whoops! Try and turn on my polyframe. All right, I'm gonna hit. Uh, didn't I dynamesh this? I guess I turned it off. There we go. So it's got the faceting in it. I'm, I'm not really interested in that so I'm just going to go down to deformation and we'll just hit polish and let's see I'm going to grab my damn standard brush and we can begin kind of blocking in some of these landmarks oh and I'm going to change my material too we'll do something like this so we have this like kind of looking at this area here and then there's this big that might be a little bit too much on the Z intensity looking at this part there whatever that thing is and then it's pretty wide, even though it gets kind of pointy there. It's it's uh, it feels like it's a little bit more bulky around this part. I'll taper that a bit more. All right, let's figure out what the front looks like. I'm going to go to clay tubes, and we'll just kind of add some more stuff on the front. These little eyeball things. So you can see how uneven the, the density is now. If I just hold control and drag off, it'll recalculate the dynamesh. And my, my clay tubes might be a little bit intense. Let's drop it down to something in the mid-20s. And I, I think, um, I don't know how much neck movement cicadas have, so we can probably just come down here and figure out where some of these features are. So like that's this little grill thing. The eyeballs will we'll throw some spheres in here at some point so we have a better idea. Something like this maybe. These where our little spheres can go. And then in this area, let's go ahead and throw the damn standard back on. I'm gonna get another subdivision. You could also just increase your dynamics resolution, it doesn't really make that much difference. And you can see Really, I'm, I'm just throwing in some, some kind of broad landmarks. I like this stuff here. I think what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is use some cloth alphas that I found on ArtStation that are really good. And we'll make this look like it's pieces of cloth in between two, sort of connecting two panels, like if it was a joint or something. Uh, whatever. So the wings are going to be a little bit of a special case. I'm going to probably wait to mess with those. Kind of see. Maybe let's get a little more volume in this area here. And let's see. There's like something. We got this this section right here, which I can kind of see there. And then it feels like this is a different area. So maybe we'll need to find, try to find one more image of what like the south side of a cicada looks like. But uh, yeah, again, it's like uh, probably there are not too many entomologists watching this who are going to be offended if I don't get it right. But really, this is just, I'm just looking for inspiration outside of what my own brain will do naturally for how to lay out some of this uh, the, this panel stuff. All right, so we've got these little these little eyeball things. Let's, let's just throw those in real quick. Subtool. So we're just going to append a, Z, a regular sphere, not a Z sphere, just a PM3 D sphere. Obviously, that's going to be a little big. So I've just tapped the, uh, I guess, the E key. W, E, and R are all going to bring up the same, the same gizmo thing here. And they feel like they're they're kind of scaled. They're not obviously they're not circular. These look like different, slightly different configurations. But whatever, we'll just kind of do something like this and maybe it's rotated forward just a notch you can always move it so now I've tapped the W key although I think I still need to do this using the the arrows 
And I don't know, maybe it's like rotated in a little bit. Uh, whatever, that's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and mirror this. So we'll go down to mirror. So mirror is going to flip it without uh, duplicating it. It's the mirror and in, in, uh, mirror and weld that I'm looking for. But if you have it on the wrong side, like it's going to want to copy from this side to this side. So if there's nothing over here and you hit mirror and weld, oh look at that. Maybe they've changed the logic. Yay. I hope I don't do that too many times as I am discovering updates. Some of the stuff is just like, it didn't make sense when I learned it a long time ago, but I just learned it anyway. So hopefully there isn't too much of that. So I'm just using clay tubes now to integrate the eyeballs in. It's not, I don't have like a huge difference there. More of like a, I don't know, whatever, like a ta tangent curvature going into the into the, uh, the the spheres here. If you want to hop between different subtools, you can just help hold the Alt key and click on the subtool. And that'll give you what you're looking for. Let's see, we'll come over here. So like right behind the eyes is where that line is, the separation between the head and the, the rest of it. And you can see it looks like there's a there's a pretty good bulge. Like if I if I look at this, what's happening there with that negative space. I'm totally missing that over here. So let's just kind of fill that in. And while we're here, we'll just look at the rest of it. Looks like there's another pretty, pretty bulgy area. The stuff is all going to be filled in a bit. And we can use the move brush, kind of pull this stuff out there. Three quarter views can be pretty useful for this exact kind of thing. All right, and there's gonna be some kind of random whatever. Once I get the overall proportions, we're gonna stop paying as much attention to the reference. But anyway, we will pick this up in the next video.